The Migrant Kitchen fed 2.6 million New Yorkers in need during the pandemic. We've come down to their pop-up ghost kitchen at the Cauldron on Stone Street, and let me tell you, this one's good for the belly and the soul. You guys have quite an amazing story with the Migrant Kitchen. How did it all come to be? Well, I met Nasser many years ago when I started working at Lily, and he was working there as a waiter. I was working in the kitchen. Flash forward a few years, and we decided we want to start a catering company that would showcase the food of migrants that we felt were the true New Yorkers. We initially started doing food for WeWork, and we had a thousand plates in our fridge by the time the shutdown happened. And Dan and I were driving the truck, what are we gonna do now? So we started donating the food. And then doctors, who are friends of mine, were asking for food because the restaurants shut down. Originally when the pandemic happened and when New York went on pause, everybody lost their job. And not everybody in this restaurant industry had unemployment benefits, something to fall back on. And I think our initial premise was to make sure we were able to feed these people, get these people back to work and take care of their families. And little by little, it grew from there. I mean, you served 10,000 meals a day? Yeah. yeah. We were at 10,000 meals a day in the dead middle of the pandemic when nobody was on the streets. We were getting these foods to the people's front yeah. door. Working it's one thing department. to provide food. It's another thing to provide culturally appropriate food. For example, we did a lot of halal meals for the community in Queens, Jackson Heights in particular. Worked with a lot of community organizations on the ground there to find out what it is that their community wanted and would eat and would accept. Because that's not something you hear every day. You know, it's just like your people are being fed what they can be given, you know, what's available. But you went above and beyond. I don't believe it was above and beyond. I think it was the bare minimum required that should be met every single time. We truly believe in the migrant kitchen that if we lead the way, people will follow. And this is why we installed the buy a meal, give a meal program. You know, $12 for a delicious meal will help us feed someone else and we will continue to do that. So we can make a reservation here or just pop by? Pop on by, otherwise we can make reservations on the Cauldron's website uh, and you can actually reserve one of these beautiful little bubbles. I mean, your takeout and delivery business is huge. Yes. You go on the migrantkitchennyc.com website, you can order directly on our tablets. We're also available on delivery apps. So you call it a ghost kitchen and let's talk about the workers inside that kitchen. Who is in your kitchen? You guys are going to see Chef Luceli Brito. She's uh, Dominican from the Bronx. You guys are going to meet Antonio Basurto. He's a uh, great gentleman from Mexico. We have Chef Alex Hernandez who is from El Salvador. So they're going to cook up some of your dishes mm -hmm. and then we're going to taste them up here? Yes. Sounds right. fantastic. Okay, great. Guys, this looks delicious. What kind of food do you serve? I know you said you do some fusions, so what will we find on the menu? This is our interpretation of Arab Latino cuisine. The Spice Road beginning in the east, coming as far west as, you know, I am from Mexico, uh, passing through Palestine with Nasser, and this is what we put onto a plate from that road. Hummus became a thing in, in New York. I think everybody has hummus, and we are showcasing here uh, a little bit of Palestinian hummus and also interpretations of it, like the carrot hummus and the beet hummus. This is our interpretation of chicken and waffles. It is a basic fried chicken and waffle. However, it is gluten-free because it's breaded in cassava and the waffle is actually a falafel. So it's a falafel waffle. It's got so much flavor. Describing the nachos is going to be a little bit different because these are nachos. these are nachos, right? Our version of nachos, we use plantain chips. You can get a choice of beef, lamb, whatever with the rest of the traditional toppings, but we fry our own plantain here instead of using tortilla chips. This is awesome. Guys, thank you so much for sharing your story and for everything you've been doing for New York City and the community. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a thank pleasure you so having much. you here and it's a privilege to do what we thank do. Thank you.